Have you ever felt that gnawing sense of longing, the urge to possess something you desire, only to question if it's truly what you need? Are you entangled in the web of unfulfilled desires, struggling to understand if you truly deserve your yearnings? This talk is your beacon, a guide to untangle thoughts and shed light on the path to contentment. Grasp these pearls of wisdom from Stoic philosophy as they illuminate the principles taking you on a journey of self-discovery. Brace yourself as we delve into an exploration of acceptance, rationality, virtue, impermanence and emotional mastery. This isn't just another talk, it's a transformative shift that uncovers the difference between want and deserve, promising to leave you enlightened and empowered. The time to redefine your desires is now. Stay tuned, you're in for a life-changing experience. Buckle up and get ready for this riveting journey. As we embark on this journey of introspection and self-discovery, the first stop is the powerful stoic principle of acceptance and surrender. It serves as an antidote to our relentless pursuit of wants and desires, encouraging us to embrace the reality of our circumstances instead. Picture this. You're stuck in a colossal traffic jam, your heart pounding as the minutes tick away. You have an important meeting to attend, a pivotal moment in your career perhaps, and here you are, halted by a sea of vehicles. You can honk in frustration, yell in despair, even curse the universe for your ill fortune, but would it change anything? The undeniable answer is no. The traffic jam is beyond your control, just as many events in life are. The Stoic philosophy persuasively argues that fighting against such uncontrollable situations is a futile exercise, an aimless battle that only breeds discontent and stress. Instead, it urges us to surrender to the realities beyond our control, fostering a sense of peace and tranquility within us. Consider the aspirations you currently cherish. You might yearn for a promotion, covet a palatial house, or pine for an illustrious career. But are these desires within your control? Can you command your boss to promote you, or convince the universe to hand you a mansion? Despite our most fervent wishes, life doesn't work that way. Therefore, Stoicism suggests an alternate approach, accepting our present circumstance, whatever it might be. This doesn't mean surrendering our dreams or becoming complacent. Rather, it's about finding contentment in what we have while continuing to strive for our goals. It's about releasing the tension between our present condition and our desired state, replacing it instead with gratitude and tranquility. For example, let's say you're an aspiring writer dreaming of publishing a best-selling novel. But instead of losing yourself in daydreams, you accept your current situation. Perhaps you're a novice writer with much to learn. You surrender to this reality and start working towards your goal from where you are, learning, improving, writing, without the persistent anxiety about the future. This acceptance creates a powerful shift in your perspective. It frees you from the shackles of unrealistic expectations and incessant worries about the future. It empowers you to focus on the here and now, the only moment you truly have control over. And who knows, with this newfound peace and focus, you might just write that bestseller one day. Acceptance and surrender, then, are not about defeat or passivity. They're about embracing reality, focusing on what we can control, and finding contentment in the present. This is the first tenet of Stoicism that guides us in understanding. Just because we want something, it doesn't necessarily mean we deserve it. Understanding this can be a powerful catalyst for inner peace and contentment. Riding on the wings of acceptance, we land on our next principle, the cornerstone of Stoicism, rationality and logic. A principle that compels us to examine our desires, not through the lens of emotion, but with the sharpness of reason. Stoicism constantly nudges us to question, to probe and to apply the cold steel of logic to our desires, does this thing we want make sense? Have we earned it? Suppose we yearn for a million dollars, a dream shared by many. But pause for a moment and ask yourself, have you put in the effort that justifies the fruition of this dream? 
Have you honed the skills, made the sacrifices, and taken the necessary risks that warrant such a reward? This isn't about discouraging ambition, it's about marrying ambition with action, aspiration with effort. Rationality in this context means aligning our desires with our efforts. It's the understanding that wanting something doesn't automatically mean deserving it. Deserving implies earning, and earning requires work, dedication and often struggle. It's about knowing that the universe doesn't owe us anything. Our dreams aren't fulfilled by sheer power of want, but by the strength of our endeavors. Let's take an everyday example. Fitness. Many of us desire a fit, healthy body, but does simply wanting it make us deserving of it? Ask any person who has achieved their fitness goals and they'll tell you about the hours of rigorous exercise, balanced nutrition and the sacrifices they made. They didn't just wish for it, they worked for it. Their desire was backed by rationality and logic, which translated into action. This principle of Stoicism, therefore, urges us to be honest with ourselves. It pushes us to step out of the realm of wishful thinking and step into the arena of action. It encourages us to be rational about our desires and not get swept away by the tides of emotion. An unearned desire is like a castle built on sand, destined to crumble. But a desire backed by reason, effort and logic is like a fort built on rock, unshakable. Rationality and logic therefore serve as a compass, guiding our desires in the right direction. They shake us awake and remind us that the fulfillment of our desires lies not in mere wanting, but in deserving. And to deserve means to work, to strive, to persevere. This is the essence of rationality and logic in Stoicism, a principle that grounds us in the reality of our desires, transforming them from mere wishes to achievable goals. Transitioning from our discussion on the role of rationality and logic in Stoic philosophy, we now find ourselves stepping into a realm that can often seem elusive, yet profoundly impactful, the realm of virtue. In the canvas of life, virtue paints itself as a constant, a beacon of light guiding us through the tumultuous waves of desire and want. Now you may ask, what does virtue have to do with my wants and desires? The answer, my friends, lies in the essence of the Stoic philosophy itself. Stoicism has always placed virtue, moral and ethical excellence, as the highest good, the ultimate goal one should aspire to achieve. Imagine your desires as a vast field. You're the farmer, and your actions are the seeds you're planting. Now not all seeds yield a fruitful crop. Some could potentially even harm the field. Similarly, not all desires, not all wants, contribute positively to our lives or to our character. For instance, one might desire to attain success by questionable means, but does that align with virtue? The Stoics insist that we should only desire what is virtuous, what is morally sound and ethical, because these are the seeds that yield a rich, satisfying and harmonious life. You may yearn for fame, wealth or power, but if these desires do not align with virtuous living, are they truly worth pursuing? Does one truly deserve the fruits of such desires that stand in stark contradiction to the principles of virtue? Moreover, virtue instills in us a sense of responsibility, compassion and empathy. It guides us to make decisions that are not just beneficial for us, but for the collective good. Virtue teaches us to want better, to want more meaningfully. It encourages us to transform our desires from superficial wants into aspirations that enrich our character and positively impact those around us. Remember, it's not wrong to want, but what we want should contribute to our growth, our virtues and importantly, the well-being of others. Only then can we say that we deserve what we want. As we traverse through this journey of life, let's strive to want not just for ourselves, but for a collective virtuous good. After all, we are not islands, but interconnected beings in this vast sea of existence. In the grand tapestry of life, virtue is the thread that weaves together a beautiful, harmonious picture, guiding our desires towards what truly matters. So let's ask ourselves, what am I desiring, and is it virtuous? 
because in the end, virtue is the highest good, the ultimate treasure we should aspire to possess, and the guiding force that helps us determine whether we truly deserve what we want. It's a journey of self-discovery, of self-improvement, and ultimately, of self-fulfillment. Be the change you want to see, embody virtue, and see how your desires transform. Building on our previous discussions, let's move forward to a principle that's both enlightening and humbling, acknowledging the impermanence of life. Friends, we live in a world where change is the only constant. The sun rises, the day passes, and then it sets, only to rise again. The seasons cycle through spring, summer, autumn, and winter, only to start again. Our life, too, is a series of phases that come and go. Interestingly, our desires are no different. Think about the toys you desired as a child. Today, as adults, they no longer hold the same appeal. This is because our desires are transient and ever-changing. Today, you might yearn for a luxury car, and once you obtain it, your desire might shift towards a private jet. Our wants are like mirages. They seem real until we approach them, then they disappear, replaced by another want. Stoics teach us to understand and embrace the impermanent nature of life. The idea isn't to suppress or ignore our desires, but to acknowledge them and understand their transient nature. When we do this, we begin to question if we truly deserve what we think we want. Is it something that adds value to our life in the long run, or is it a fleeting want that will be replaced by another? By acknowledging the impermanence of life, we can also practice gratitude for what we have. We can celebrate the here and now and find joy and contentment in the present moment. Stoics believe that this sense of contentment is a true sign of wealth and success. So, the next time you find yourself yearning for something, take a moment to step back and reflect. Ask yourself if this desire will stand the test of time. Will it still matter a year, five years or a decade from now? If not, does it truly merit your time, energy and attention? Before we continue, here's a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button below. We have a lot more insightful discussions coming your way on this channel. By subscribing, you won't miss a single one. Remember, embracing the impermanence of life isn't about denying our desires, but about understanding them. It's about learning to differentiate between fleeting wants and timeless needs. It's a liberating principle that frees us from the relentless pursuit of ever-changing wants, allowing us to focus on what truly matters and adds value to our life. Understanding the role of virtue, impermanence and rationality in our desires brings us to the final principle, which is perhaps the most challenging but also the most liberating, the principle of emotion control. Stoicism is rooted in the understanding that life's events are neutral, it's our perceptions and reactions that give them meaning. This is where emotions come into play. Emotions are powerful, they can dictate our actions, cloud our judgment and intensify our desires. But are these emotional desires truly deserving? Imagine you've had a hard day at work, stress is at its peak, and you seek solace in the comfort of a rich creamy dessert. It's a desire driven by emotion, an attempt to find joy in the face of adversity. But does this temporary pleasure truly serve your long-term well-being? Does it contribute to your virtue, or is it a mere illusion of comfort? In the grand scheme of life, do you really deserve this? Stoicism teaches us to distinguish between emotions, fleeting, subjective experiences, and reason, which is enduring and objective. It encourages us to respond rather than react to situations, to be masters of our feelings rather than slaves to them. When we learn to control our emotions, we are less likely to be swayed by momentary impulses or desires. We become more capable of discerning what we truly deserve. Acquiring mastery over your emotions empowers decision-making, aligning it with your true needs and virtues rather than temporary wants. It enables you to step back from your emotional desires and evaluate if they are logical, if they contribute to your ethical excellence, and if they are truly deserving. 
However, it's important not to suppress or ignore our emotions. Instead, we must understand them, acknowledge their presence, and then guide them in a way that serves us. Let's take the example of anger. Stoicism doesn't suggest that we should not feel anger. Instead, it teaches us to understand the root of this anger, to question it, and then to use it productively. To sum up, the real challenge lies not in the suppression of desire, but in understanding its nature. It's about discerning whether our desires are emotionally driven impulses or well-considered wants that align with our virtues and rational understanding of life. The path of Stoicism guides us on this journey of emotional mastery, helping us differentiate between what we want and what we truly deserve. As you continue to explore these principles of Stoic philosophy, remember that the journey might be challenging, but the outcome is truly liberating. In the wise words of Marcus Aurelius, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength.